It's the Miss Seeley Show, and today we have... Pretty Cocaine. And Pretty Cocaine, where are you from? Rayville, Louisiana. Okay, something different. Rayville, Louisiana. My hometown. My first female. Okay, this is something here. Mm -hmm. How long have you been rapping? About two years. Do you um, go on performances, or have you done any stage work? I did last year. I haven't really did anything this year, but last year I had three performances. Bastra, Mississippi, and Rayville. Okay, that's great, that's great. And how old are you? I'm 25. 25, an OG, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, when's the last time you made a song? About two months ago. I haven't been putting anything out. I've just been under the radar, really. So you haven't been making music? Nah, not hmm. sure. That's different. You're one of the few that hasn't been doing anything. What is stopping you from making music? I put a pause on things. I had to get my life together. I really wasn't. Music is for fun for me right now. It's like, it's something I want to do, but it ain't nothing I'm going to get too deep in. Like, I'm not going to spend all my money trying to do this and trying to do that right now. If it happens, it happens. If it don't, it don't. So, I just been going with the motions, going with the flow. I ain't really too much tripping on the music like that. But like I said, if it happens, it happens. If it don't, it don't. When you was doing music, how often were you going to the studio? Every weekend. I was going with my brothers. That's what made me start. I was going with my brothers almost every weekend. And I hate I stop, but it is what it is. So, yeah. Well, if you hate you stop, why don't you start back? When are you going to start back? I am after this interview. <laughs> I am. <laughs> It's so many females. They want the females. The females popping right now. And right. I was sleeping on myself. Last year I was so geeked up for doing this. I was so ready. I was just, this year I slept on myself. So after this interview, I actually got to go meet up with some people to do some music. So, yeah, I'm starting after this interview. Well, that's great that you're going to, you know, take a toll on things and get things handled. Instead of putting them by the wayside. Since you say it's not serious. <laughs> I ain't, I don't mean not serious, it's just like, at that moment, like, at, at the time when I was doing all that, I was moving too fast, and I started to lose sight of what I really needed to be doing at that moment. I was just like, it was all music, 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 so I lost a lot in the process of just trying to be somebody I wasn't. Like, I wasn't ready to be pretty cocaine, I was still trying to see who I was after all the stuff I've been through, so now... I'm on the train where I'm ready to get back out there and do what I need to do to get pretty cocaine farther than Rave or Monroe, like the surrounding areas. It's time to get out there. It's time to do what I need to do. Okay. Um, what do you think is the best song that you have out of all of your songs? I feel like Fuck Me Good is underrated and that's only because I didn't put my all in there. Like Fuck Me Good is a real good song and a lot of people I haven't seen or really gave a chance to listen to that song but my most popular song is with shiesty mm -hmm. but i like fuck me good mm -hmm. something about this song so if you had an opportunity which one of those songs would you perform in front of somebody to catch their attention like a famous person mm, fuck me good fuck me good <laughs> fuck me good Trina and Lil Kim probably definitely will fuck with that. Meg, all them hoes. Yeah, fuck me good. Yeah, I love yeah. Carisha and JT. Yeah. Like, it's the lyrics most definitely in fuck me good. It's mostly listen to it. If you listen to it, you really gonna see why I like fuck me good. <laughs> okay, how did you feel after you wrote fuck me good? <laughs> Hot, <laughs> heated, <laughs> ready. <laughs> I feel. TTG, I was ready to go get him. <laughs> Did you write that song to someone? Uh, no. I wrote that song for like the females. Like we always sitting there saying how we don't fuck with niggas, we don't want these niggas. Like that's the songs that we usually get mm -hmm. all against niggas. Let's be honest. Behind clothes though, we texting that nigga. We brought that nigga up because right. you, you, you know he fuck, fuck good. good. You know he fuck <laughs> me good. Because we go together. Real bad. <laughs> Have you ever made a diss song? A diss track? <laughs> Are you just laughing? Because I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did. I made it to a boy. Y'all. 
I made it to him, but what I did was send it to all his homeboys and not him. Yeah, I, wow. I hurt him. I'm so sorry for that. Wow. But oh. <laughs> I had to take wow. it off YouTube, but I didn't make one. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Okay. So, was Fuck Me Good the last song you made? Fuck Me Good. No, uh, the last song I made, the ones that haven't been revealed. Stick and Move was the last song I made that's on YouTube. Mm -hmm. That's the last one that I have made, but the ones that I haven't came out with yet, I don't really want to put them out there yet. Okay. I don't need nobody stealing my name, you know? Okay, all right, that's fine. Mm -hmm. So, do you think your childhood affected, like, your writing or anything, or you don't feel like it affected it? I feel like um, my childhood is what's going to grow my music. I haven't been putting my childhood in my music yet but i think if i actually sit down and put it in there that would be more so what would make me successful for real because what i've been through the average 25 year old would have already broke right by now but i'm still standing all right all right, all right. Mm -hmm. yes. yes that's right so your music what is it mostly motivated from my music is my piece like I like to have fun. All my friends know I'm the goofy one. I'm the outgoing one. I'm the one that's going to always just make you laugh out of anywhere. So when I get in the car and I'm by myself and I'm with them or I'm with them, music. Like I say, I'm going to be on. I don't care if it's a crazy beat, if it's a good beat. I'm going to say something. I'm going to rap something. So like that made me happy. And when I feel like I'm in some type of mood, that mood, I'm starting to put that in music. Whatever I feel, like if it's pain, I'm finna do a ride wave song yeah. feature, something like that. <laughs> if it's Kevin Gates, I feel like I'm ready to go, you know, to the trap. Some butt? Nah, I ain't doing that, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I get AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't doing that. <laughs> but if I feel like whatever I feel, it's just strictly music now. I just know that's where it needs to be. At. So you have love for the music? I love the music. Okay. I just didn't want to fall too deep. In love with the music. Okay, okay. If there was anything you could do to change something that happened in your childhood, what would that be? Um, my sister passing um, in 2015 when I was 17. Uh, my sister Mika Shea, she passed with a head-on collision. And that's like that was like my best friend, and she really was the one that was just sit there and let me rap all day long off anything and not have a word to say. You know, everybody don't want to hit it all the time. I ain't gonna lie. Her, she don't care. She'll lay on that couch. She'll let me rap to her the whole time. And that was like my breaking point right there. And then we got the same birthday. So every year I got to go through this. Every year I got to really just sit there and think like, Man, if you was here, I knew you would have been at Boosie House with me. I knew you would have been at Atlanta with me. I, know, I just be sitting there thinking, like, we would have been. She'll go everywhere. She don't care. Like, she was so supportive. She bought my first iPhone, man. I had a flip phone. She coming there with, like, an iPhone 6, 5 birthdays, both of us. That was my go get her. And if I could just get her back just for one day and tell her everything I got going on, she'd make it all right. Yeah. That was my girl. Rest in peace. Rest in Rest peace, Mika. Um, who do you think had a big impact on you as far as your life? Like, who was a big role model to you? My mama. My mama. I went through so much with my mama, and most females probably do. But my mama, like, my mama made a U-turn. And I'm not, this ain't, my, this ain't her interview to tell her story, but my mama hit a U-turn. And me seeing my mama come from struggling to, like, she could do something with the snap of her finger from no lights to like she got lights in different area goes now. <laughs> that right there, that's just, that was different. And she showed me that both sides of the fence. Like you could take this way and be a struggle and do this, or you could take this way and be an empowered woman. And I do respect my mama for that. Okay, okay. Well, that's good. Now, what is the most tragic thing that has gone on? doing your career, just doing your rap career. Has anything tragic happened or? Mm, yes. Uh, and it's like, I say it always happened with my brothers and I love my brothers, they they do rap too. Uh, they kind of geek me up to start rapping and it's like when I be wanting to show them something, I feel like they don't support me enough as in my music because it's always 
If I got somebody in front of me that's interested in me, they overcome me. They got more music than me because they do it a lot. So they'll just like put their stuff out there and they won't even, it's like forget about me now. Mm -hmm. I'm not nobody. And that's something that I hate they do and I'll never tell them. And they're going to see this and they're going to probably say so. <laughs> but it is what it is coming from the heart. Like my brothers, they stop me from a lot of things. Like, and I let them go because. I know they rap and I know that's what they want too. So I just move on and I forget about myself. So that's really why I be in the background a lot. Okay, so your brothers rap as well. Your brothers rap as well. How many brothers is that that rap? Two of them. Um, Two of them. Yeah, they be. They got some bars. <laughs> okay, all right. And who are they? What's their names? What's their rap names? MBK Tizzy. Which I did an interview with Tizzy. A good interview. Shouts out to Tizzy. Yeah, that's my boy. I know <laughs> guy. And we can't eat smoke. All right, smoke. Mm -hmm. All right, big smoke. <laughs> Shout out to my big brother. <laughs> yeah, okay, cool, cool. I'm going to have to get with Smokey maybe soon. Since he rapping too. <laughs> Gorilla, he date. Okay, all right. What is one of the, okay, what's one of the best moments you had like at a show or when you did a performance? What was your best moment? Like, what do you remember from that night? And it just made you be like, yes, I want this for life. <laughs> well, shout out to Bastro. Bastro made me feel like I was on top of the world. Okay, Bastro. Like, Bastro put, yeah, they cut up bad. That was my first, my very first performance. I was so, so nervous. But Bastro, it was like, my friends say that, y'all. But <laughs> it was like... It was different. It, it just made me feel like I was Megan Stallion up there. Like they was, mm -hmm. they was on my trail bad. So I was Still. like, ooh, ooh, ooh. That, that night, if I can go back, man, I would. Hmm. I would. Okay. So what song did you perform that night? I performed Fuck Me Good and Lil Shiesty. Lil Shiesty went crazy. That's why I say. I think a lot of people love Lil Shiesty. Mm -hmm. But Lil Shiesty, I had females. What I'm not my eyelash off like <laughs> I ain't even know I ain't had no eyelash. Like, I'm, yeah, I'm, so I'm looking sorry. at the videos. I'm hurt when I see these videos because yeah, I got one eyelash up there. Oh and they up like they so turned. One on her head. It was it was insane. You would have you would have thought I was somebody else up there. So that's what Bastro. Shout out to Bastro, man. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, do you expect this? If you was to put your mind to this. Where do you expect this rap stuff to take you? If I was just a full flesh and go go hard at it, I believe I can make it. No, I know I can make it. I know I can do it. I just have to actually put the time in and actually go and do it. I got everything get, that I need in my hands. Mm -hmm. I'm not even I'm not using it. it. You have the resources. I got everything. I got a bum ass manager, got a bum ass <laughs> cameraman, okay. shout out to them, like, mm -hmm. I got a bum ass friends, I got everything that I need, and it's just like, I'm holding back them from getting, we could be everywhere, we could be anywhere right now, and it's me, so. Mm, it's you, you, that's right, you determine your altitude. So what you gonna do about that? I'm gonna fucking fix it, like, <laughs> it's time for us to eat, like. We can't keep eating out the same place. Time for us to go in there and get our own plates. And I pay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a little different right. now. It's time Big to time. eat. Big time. <clears throat> I ain't talking about eating no rice. We eating steak. Like, it's time to eat. And I'm, I want to eat. I'm seeing it. Okay, um, locally, like the local artists, like maybe Baton Rouge, you know, locally around here, Louisiana, Texas, maybe Arkansas, I don't know nobody mm -hmm. rap from Arkansas, though. But <laughs> anyways, uh, who would you like to perform a song with maybe locally? Somebody not too big, you know? Um, if I could do a song with somebody, it's going to be like, hmm... Kuda, I'll do a song with him. Okay. I'll do a song with... You know, I don't really be liking that thug shit. Like, they be doing some crazy shit. Like, I like to shake ass out of the ass. That's what me and my friends like do. We don't want to get shot up in our ass. Like, mm -hmm. so. <laughs> shot up in our ass? Yeah, no, like, we don't, we don't need no, no shots. No, we just no, trying no. to have a good time. So, it's like, <laughs> them calm rappers, like, they want to see some clappers, not shoot no clappers. Mm -hmm. I'll do mm -hmm. one with Jam. I'm waiting on Jam response. Like, me and him, we supposed to be doing something together. Them. I'm trying to see. Oh, yeah, I'm hometown. Shout out to Ray Louisiana, Ken Ken. Okay, well, I'll do Ken. one of him and smoking. Okay, I'll do a song with him. 
Anybody from Ravel, then rap. <laughs> if you can rap, okay, you rap, it's up. Okay, let's Anybody from Ravel, but shouts out to Kuda. Also, shouts out to, um... Oh, shouts out to Jam. I did an uh, interview with Kuda. Jam and me supposed to, we supposed to get together as well. Walkie, shouts out to you. Pure Smoke, most definitely shouts out to you. You know you're doing your thing too. Mm -hmm. All right, now, these big people. Now, who you think, who you want to stand beside? Up there, up there. Sexy Red, Man, no! <laughs> That's how you get up there. Man, I love, I love how, I love how just like. Damn, hold on, I gotta re-ask really that because I can't say that. I cannot say no! Now you that's what I do when I'm with Trina, man. Trina the baddest okay. bitch, bro. Over with. Like, stamp. Baddest. Um, Beyonce be on that same shit, but shit, I fuck with it too. Like, I come in there with a couple balls and she gave me a chance. You know, she right there. I don't right think there. she would be hard, to be honest, because Jay Z just did something with Silk the Shocker. Like, I don't think it'll be For hard. For real, though. And lie, motherfucking throat. Oh, yeah. Wait, she that's giving, my she bitch. She giving features out for free for uh, females. What are you Boy, waiting on? You need to feel something. Lotto, I'm yeah. coming. I'm coming. And Suki, Suki, you bitch, you know it's nothing against you because I was in your video with my old lads <laughs> throwing that motherfucking thing. Suki, so you know I fucks with you. I followed you all the natchez to the country, bitch. What are you talking about? Rotel dick and dip. Yeah. Rotel dick. Dick shit. Suki, we was in the same pool together. We swim right next right. to you, Suki. Give me a verse. And sexy. You like my vibe? It turn you on. I fucks with you too. I'm just, you know, I don't never feel no type of way. I love Rachel. I love Rachel. Come get me out this little city. I've been watching her since Love, um, my, love yes. Hip Hop Miami. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's when she first came out when she was with friends and mm -hmm. like she lost managers and everything because they tried to change her. Mm -hmm. And she was head strong. On stand don't who she was. Don't change me. You, I she know like this is what I want. Like this is what I want to do, and this right. is what I'm saying. And she stuck to it. That's why I'm telling y'all, y'all go back and look at Love and Hip Hop Miami, uh, season four. Mm -hmm. Watch that whole season. You gonna see how? No, I'm sorry. Go back to season three because season three is when she first came out. Season four is when she's actually when she was like her natural but hair. But now, mm -hmm. but really now, going but, you, but they got season five now. She's on there as well, you know. But she's big now. But if you go back and you watch, she was all, she told him no. This is who she want to be. She's ratchet. I can't change myself. I'm a ratchet ass bitch, and that's mm -hmm. what she is. And I love that ratchet ass shit. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she do. I, oh yeah, she just do the most. But I love her, Suki. She, like I say, Hell yeah, I, you gotta stay. You gotta stay true to who you are. Mm -hmm. That's my message to you. Um, just stay true to who you are. Don't let no one try to change your vision. Your vision is your vision for mm -hmm. a reason. And if you just stick to your vision and consi consistently, you gonna be good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, most of the time the game change people though. You know it does. Yeah, I mean, I, you 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 have to change, you know, because you have money because you don't want like it's just if you got a million dollars, you just can't be in the projects every day. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you just can't like. I mean, I you still can just go back and give to the project, $40, but just wait. If you if you at that type of money frame, I mean at that type of money status, you gonna have a different mind frame. So you you you're not gonna you know it's, it's not gonna change you, <laughs> but, you but it's not gonna, gonna better be you. Anymore. Yeah, it's just gonna better you basically. So yeah, like I say, it's like it's nothing wrong with wanting better. It's, it's nothing wrong with doing nothing better. wrong with that at all because. Just don't forget where you're coming from. Exactly. Like, why can't like, we? Why can't we make it? If I go somewhere it? from Ravel, I'm not gonna ever, ever, ever forget you know, where I come project. from. My grandpa, my grandma, they all in Ravel. Never gonna forget where I'm right. coming from. I go somewhere. My first couple millions that I make is going back into my town. Like there's right. nothing for you the kids to do down there. So <laughs> what would you do? What exactly would you do for your community, for right. your town? Right. Because it's so small. You you know what right. would you do for that little city? Right. When I was young, they had a pool and. We used to go to the pool every day for a dollar. Mm -hmm. When I get from school, every day for a dollar. 
We ain't worried about no guns. We ain't worried about no little boys. We ain't worried about having sex. We're going in that pool. Some of us about to drown. And we're going to have to pick everybody. Going to pick everybody up. They took everything away in Rave Life. There's nothing down there. Then they trying to take the rig. I'm going in there like Drew Brees came down here. But it, it's, it's, it's not going to be all that money. It's going to be a dollar. Come in and have a good time. <laughs> Put the guns down, kids. Like, you don't need no gun. You, can, you definitely can't come through here with a gun. Hmm. Go in there and right. try to beat the high score. You, the high right. score right there, 5,000. I'm going to shoot the ball and try to beat the high score. Take your mind off that violence and them guns. And I want to have my time. I'm tired of seeing them go down like this. Move each other to gun violence. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the gun violence rate is very high. It is. So how do you feel about rap beef, speaking of violence? I feel like it's ignorant. And it's just like, it's insane. Because like... <laughs> Why y'all doing it? Like, what, what, what's the purpose? To get our attention? You already got our attention with the good music you got. But you, you rather go kill somebody or get killed and go to jail and lose all your money? It's going to be there. But what can you do with it besides buy some honey buns? Mm -hmm. what, you, what, what can you do with it? It, it's, it makes no sense. Like, it's a guy I know right now that's in jail. He good. He real good at rapping. Like, he can do it. But you got to be the big boss all the time. You got to run this city. Hmm. Sit down, man. Sit down. Be humble. Your time coming. They waiting on you to just come. Ain't nobody trying to sign nobody that's trying to go on death row. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Does your mom support your music? Yes, she support everything I do. Like, she ain't like fuck me good. She ain't, she ain't really want to hit it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But the other two songs, she was, <clears throat> she's one of the ones that's like, you need to keep going. Mm -hmm. Like, Go at it, push through it. She's like, I'm, I'm listening to some of the people, and I'm like, my daughter rap better than that. Mm -hmm. And I don't really hear her say much about rapping when it come to me, so it, it be making me feel good. It make me feel. That's good. That's great. Mm. So you said you did have a manager. So who makes your beats for you? Uh, little man. He's from Ravel. I try to. Keep it in my circle for my family, like Rabel family. Mm -hmm. If you're doing something that's productive and I can use that, I'm trying to use it. So, little man Courtney, he does my own um, beats, all my beats. Or if I find some on YouTube, I'll probably deal with that. But mostly, my songs have came from him. Okay, um, do you freestyle? Do you ghost write? Do you have a ghost writer? Do you write for yourself? You punching in? Like you doing everything? What you got going? Um, sober, I am a horrible freestyler. <laughs> I, I can't really freestyle like that, but like, I do it, but I can't really do it. It ain't gonna make no sense. I started off with poems. I used to write poems since I was 12. Mm -hmm. Like Everybody went through their poetry stage that does music. Mm -hmm. I, the second person that told me that, not, I told them the same thing. I love my poetry. I love the, the snap, and I used to do all that, and then I just... Now I turn it into songs because that's all it really is. So I feel like that. Hmm, I need another drink. <laughs> <laughs> what are your social media platforms? So my Instagram is the pretty cocaine. And how is that the? Is it T or D or what? T H E. Okay, T H E. Pretty is, if you don't know how to spell this, it's your problem. So you know I spell pretty and cocaine is K O C A I N E E. Mm-hmm. Your Instagram, what you have a YouTube? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got a YouTube. It's the pretty cane. Everything is the pretty cocaine. Okay. So you find my Instagram, you tap on that bio, you're gonna see everything. Okay. The pretty cocaine on mm -hmm. IG. Yeah. Is it anything that you would just like to add or anything that you would like to say? Um, yes. Actually, I want to thank my friends and my fans if I have some out there. Shout out to the fans. Yeah, for real though. Shout out to um, Ravel, my hometown, and shout out to Rice and Gravy for putting belief in me. Like, he always pushes me. He always tells me what I need to do. And he's always on my side. Even. <laughs> When I ain't on my own side. He's mm -hmm. always there for real though. Another shout out to Rice and Gravy. And shout out to Miss Seeley. Oh wow.
Production. <laughs> 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 Shout out to Miss Seely though. Um, and I am also proud of her for everything that she is doing. Like, this is a big thing, and you don't see a lot of people doing all this. So yeah, shout out to you. Shout out to you. Do they do that still? Yeah. Break the rules. Break the rules, yo. You can break the rules. Yeah. That means you break it. You going up? Yes, you're going high. Right. Yeah, she's another person that's in my life that makes sure it's on stays on the right path. Like. Music to me, they know that's everything to me, but they make sure I bring it out and they make sure that I continue to push through everything that I go through. So shout out to y'all and I appreciate y'all for real. Thank you. Um, when you think we get like a live performance, check some of your music out? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. Yeah, let's get it popping. Gotcha. Uh -huh. Okay, then cool. Well, y'all, once again, it's the Miss Seeley Show with Pretty Cool Kane. Uh huh, and we'll be seeing you next time. But this is my 10th interview, my 10th rapper slash artist interview, you all. And I'm excited about this. So since I'm excited, exciting things are going to start happening. Who want a video? Who want a video? Okay, I'm going to let y'all know the details on the status later. He fuck me good, he do, he fuck me good, he do, he fuck me good, he fuck me good, he fuck me, 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 he fuck me good.